capabilities and higher efficiencies, but we can't forget the reliable operation of existing technologies. So my work is based on finding the application of infrared thermography in quantitative investigation of potential induced degradation in crystalline silicon PV materials. So this is the outline of my presentation. So firstly, I will talk about the potential induced degradation. Then what are the calculation techniques we have, and then why we are moving towards this IR thermography, and then I will explain my work, and then I will conclude this presentation. So what happens in a large PV plant? We have large number of PV modules connected in series, and due to this kind of topology, this cell experiences the potential difference between the module that is grounded and due to this potential difference the ions present on the surface of solar cell drift towards the pn junction and they result in an extra leakage path that is known as sunting so it causes pid sunting so this is a serial degradation mechanism it results in up to 40% power loss in few months of installations there are pid recovery technique available but complete recovery is not possible in most cases therefore Periodic quantitative performance analysis and monitoring of this PID something is essential to prevent further degradation. So there are existing technology for the characterization like IV characteristics, electroluminescence imaging, and infrared thermography. So in IV and EM, we you know we just take an image in the case of EM imaging, and in IR we just measure the IR image. IR that is current voltage characteristics of a module. In case of infrared thermography, we have two types of thermography. One is known as dark or inverse, and other another is known as illuminated inverse thermography. In case of inverse thermography, we inject current and then produce the temperature pattern on the surface of a solar module. But how PID is visible in this technology? So in case of a EL image, that cells appear dark in nature or dark in color. Or in case of illuminated or dark IR, it's where the pattern of PID simply cell reverse. So in case of illuminated IR, these peripheral cells are PID degraded. Those are at high temperature in case of illuminated IR thermography, but those are at low temperature in case of dark IR thermography. So we have existing technology, then why we are moving towards IR thermography if we have EN and IV? So what happens? EN cannot quantify the severely degraded PID centered cells. Like here, this is the EM image and IR image of the same module that is PID degraded and the cells, those are visible here in red color and white color. So they are severely PID degraded cells. So there is no EL emission, but they are having some kind of temperature distribution on the surface of solar module. And in case of IV characteristics, implementation of IV on a large scale farm will be time consuming and it will be a hectic task. So therefore, the objective of this work to unveil the potential of infrared thermography for quantitative investigation of PID sensing. So, to just help to analyze the potential of this, first we did some simulation work. So, this is a double diode model of a solar cell, and these two, we can say diode and resistance, are the parameters which are influenced by PID sensing. And then we change both parameters one by one, and we find out that. There is one to one relationship between the PID sunting and power loss due to PID sunting and the heat dissipation. Experimentally, this is a double diode model under dark conditions. There is no current source because it is under dark condition. So, we can assume this as a device with ZL impedance. And what happens if we are giving high current to this, then it will generate some kind of heat. And this heat will depend on this Z, that is the total impedance of the non linear device. So this heat will be utilized in increasing the temperature of solar cell as well as some of the heat will be lost into the environment by convective and radiative losses. So if there is a current injecting in the solar cell, what happens? With time, the temperature starts increasing and after some time it stabilizes because at that condition, the power generated inside the solar cell becomes equal to the power loss into the environment. But we can see here, this over this temperature, that is the final temperature depends on this Z value and this Z value depends on the PID sensitive parameters. But there are three open questions like we can say what should be the optimal current because we are injecting current here and which side can be used for the imaging purpose and what 
thermodynamic condition we should utilize it is steady state or transient state and this so we in the first part of this work we find out the answer to this question and second part we did some cell level analysis so this is the setup which has been utilized for this study so for this ir thermographic work for the module level analysis we did we took ir images from front glass side back side glass side at both condition that transient state and steady state at three different input currents that is isc 50% of isc and 20% of isc that is high medium and low then we did pearson correlation which correlate power with the temperature then at the highly correlated condition we did some cell level analysis using histogram based analysis and kd statistical analysis and we find out a formula for pid similarity index and also we proposed an empirical model which correlate the temperature of the solar cell with the power output so for the module level investigation we found out that 50% is the optimal current because at the high current what happens series resistance influences the correlation and while at the low current there are more influences of the noises for the imaging side conditions we have back seat versus glass so we found that either side can be used for this quantitative pid investigation but we know emissivity of glass and back seat differs but this correlation is relative and also we found out that the noise through the glass was more influenced and for the thermodynamic state we find out that the steady state condition is the optimal condition and it because it is in a thermodynamic equilibrium while the transient state from some initial thermodynamic thermal dynamic thermal reference responses so for the cell level investigation what we found these are the histogram of each cell having different temperature patterns so we can say these bins are concentrated towards the higher temperature side for the healthier cells but as the pid initiate what happens these high temperature start broadening means the distribution of temperature start broadening and with the progression of pid these broader temperature pattern result in bimodal or multimodal patterns and with the severely pid degraded cells these histograms shifted towards the lower temperature side so we find out that pid cvt index so what we did we did we took five cells from each modules and we have taken in order of increasing pid severity and we did we find out this pid cvt index using this kde and full width that half maxima value and these are the index value which we obtain which directly correlated with this ear image pattern so using this pid severity we can find out or we can quantify the pid something in a module means which cell is more influenced or which is more severely degraded and which are not and then we propose an empirical model which correlate this power with the temperature of the solar cell so we validated this at cell level as well as module level so in module level we did it for 20 modules and it is a generalized model which predict power with good accuracy that is 95% and in case of severely pid affected cells where this ear imaging fails this method can be used easily so now i will like to conclude my presentation so pid is something the severe degradation mechanism which need continuous monitoring and quantitative investigation so we find out that ir thermography have potential in quantitative investigation of pid sensing and we find out that medium current at under steady state condition is the best condition and we also find out that pid affect the local temperature distributions which can be used to get insight into the extent of pid degradation and we also obtain a pid severity index which can be used to quantify the severity of pid sensing in cells within a pv model and also we propose an empirical model which is helpful in estimating power output using cell temperature therefore we conclude that ir is a valuable tool that is feasible effective for reliability monitoring and maintenance practices thank you thank you very much uh, questions please
Any other question? Yeah. Uh, this is Rajat Shetty from uh, Ampere Solar. Uh, just wanted to know that uh, the quality of IV, uh, this IR testing uh, with respect to EL, the tolerance range of IR is very broad. Okay, and in the EL, it is very specific. And you are saying that uh, with IR, you are able to more, better quantify the PID shunt thing you can. Is it right? No, I'm not un able to understand. Yeah, I'm saying EL is better. But what happens in case of severely PID infected cells, there is no EL emission. So we cannot quantify cells using the EL emission. But your thermal pictures there, you are saying that uh, the emissions, neither they are on the top end nor they are at the bottom end. They are in the mid range yes, of yes. thermal yeah. emission. Then how you are quantifying that these are PID affected cells? We are taking actually delta T, means the highest temperature of the cell. Then we are finding the delta T with corresponding to the higher cell. And then we are doing analysis. We can say we are having a threshold value. So if the temperature delta T is more than this or less than this, then we are quantifying this is PID. And in this study, what we did, we took, first we took module, then we did EL imaging. From the EL imaging, we find out these are the PID degraded cells. Then we did IR thermography. Okay. So, okay. so, what is, just the last question, uh, what is the sample size on how many modules you have done this to come to a correlation? Around 20 modules. Okay. So, in India, you see PID affected modules on the ground? or these are specifically affected PID modules you have created or some specific modules you have found for the PID? Mod modules definitely are affected with PID but in this case we did like environmental chamber thing in our lab only. So it is accelerated testing. Okay. And thank you. And those PID affected modules, the earlier generation modules, they were heavily affected by PID. But the reason what are the related effects?